Hey folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. It is Sunday, May 7th, 2023. It's a nice day out today. It's about 72 degrees, partly cloudy. Got us a good breeze going here to help keep us cool. It's pretty humid, so we're gonna have to work through that and be sweating a lot. So hopefully this video today <clears throat> will be a lot more upbeat than the last one. So yeah, last time had all the dead bees from the starvation. So uh, I got all through my hives after that video, checked them all out. And so three of them were like severely impacted with what you saw. And uh, I've been feeding almost every day. I think I've only skipped two days uh, since I shot that video on feeding. So I've got some court feeders out on, on the entrance, entrance feeders and uh, I'll just kind of walk around and show you what's going on here and, and give you a little bit of history of some of the hives. Okay, here's uh, what I've got going on with my feed. So I bought me uh, two cases of quartz uh, jars and what I'll do is I'll mix my feed up in my big barn up there in the apartment where I've got a sink and all that and it's real easy up there the bees don't uh, get in it up there because it's all enclosed so I'll fill one up and I'll come down here and I'll swap out for the empties and uh, so all the the other case that I bought they're all out here on all the hives so I normally hate running these entrance feeders but uh, I had to get a lot of feed into a lot of different hives at the same time so that was kind of what I, I went for and at first I had my supers off I'd set them to the side so I wouldn't be getting any sugar water in the supers and uh, I quickly discovered that the bees were just consuming everything that went in there they weren't storing any until about uh, closer to the end of the week and then I started seeing a little bit of that nectar in some of the, the comb where they were actually putting some away. So, yeah, that's what's going on with these feeders. So I'll just come out and I'll swap, swap these out. And I might peek into some of these supers. I moved a third super onto this one here. That hive there is so strong. So I... I I didn't have any other place to put that, so I just set it on there. But uh, over here, I've got a little split that I made. So this came from Hive 20, which is back off over here. And that's one reason I was so tired uh, that day. I spent a long time in this Hive 20 right there. Uh, it superseded. So I went through there looking for queens. And I found one virgin queen. I put her in a clip and I spent a long time trying to find another. I finally did spot another queen. So I brought the queen uh, in the clip on over back into this little split here, which I did bring a queen over into this split on the frame I carried over uh, when I first did it. And when I went to put the frame in the hive, I could not find that queen on that, that high on that frame. So I think she flew off, so that's why I did that. And uh, man, that took a long time to do all that. So one of the things I wanna to do today is get into that split and see if I can find that queen. I got in there two days ago and I did not see her. Uh, the prior inspection before that, I did see her. So I do have this little robbing screen on the front of it because uh, robbers were getting around there because I was feeding it and uh, I don't know if that robber screen will inhibit that queen from finding her way back in there or not. We'll just have to see. If not, uh, in two weeks, I will be getting six queens from Wildflower Meadows and I'll put one in there if it's still queenless at that time. I probably need to get a little bit of brood in there so they don't start doing the, the laying worker thing on me. So prior video, I did get the two queens marked in these two hives here, got them marked red. And I have not edited that yet uh, because I wanted to get that video out quickly of the one with all the, the die off because I thought it was important to get that out so people could see it. And especially here in Oklahoma, 
I got the word out a lot on Facebook and Instagram and several people have responded they are seeing the same thing here in Oklahoma and no one's ever seen anything like this before at least no one that I've talked to so uh, also I want to get into that Hive 27 down there the one that had all the dead bees and check it out see how it's doing and I have the top uh, deep box down there off of it sitting right there on the stand by itself and I need to start working those frames into some stronger hives here uh, so they can get them cleaned up. That or I just need to uh, let them go and I'll power wash them. But anyway, let's get started. Uh, probably going to start over here on this little nuke and see if we can find us a queen in there. Okay, I lied. I'm going to start over here on uh, hive 15. So this hive I've been feeding internally and I've given it five two and a half quart containers of liquid and the reason I'm feeding it internally is because of the the Saracel bottom board that I'm using you cannot put an entrance feeder on these uh, there's just no way to do it uh, I don't know if they have a special feeder that works with these or not but uh, that's the reason I'm feeding internal here and I fed them a lot. This is a strong hive. I'll show you what it looks like in there. So this hive probably didn't need this last feeding I gave it. Uh, but I went ahead and gave them one more. So they do have quite a bit of stores built up now. You can see how strong this hive is. And they are a little grumpy too. So I just smoke them down and then I refill this container each time. But this time I'm taking it off because uh, they got quite a bit stored up. I've been keeping track. I've been watching the frames. And they get a little rank. <laughs> So you see I put the two sticks down there to keep the feeder up off of the frame so they can get all the way around it. And uh, it's just a uh, little tub. Holds two liters or two quarts. I thought it was two and a half. It's two quarts. And I put a bunch of little holes in the lid there. So when you flip these over, be sure you hang on to that lid because it doesn't seal real tight. We'll uh, peek in here real quick, just to double check, make sure they've got some good stores in here. So yeah, this outside frame is about completely full. Uh, not on the very outside, but right there. So that wasn't even full before. So I know they've got a filled up pretty good in here what you don't want to do is keep feeding them like this they'll start backfilling where the queen needs to lay they'll start putting this nectar in there and she don't have any place to lay so that's kind of like a honey bound situation that you created artificially and that's not good for anybody you get the queen excluder on there had to go hunt this down all the mayhem moving things around got a little unorganized and it wasn't here by the hive the one that was here probably wound up going somewhere else okay queen stay out of my supers so these are fully drawn stored away over winter and they're ready to go the next season Saves the bees having to build the comb. It's good looking, nice, clean comb. Never had brood in it. If you get brood in your uh, honey supers and you store it away, those uh, frames that have had brood in them, the wax moth and wax moth larvae really like to get in there and eat those up. So that's another reason, to, a good reason to keep to run an excluder and keep queens out of your supers. If you put on an empty super like this, 
all these nice empty frames and you got a strong hive that queen's going to come up here and start laying i guarantee you she will do that and when you're wanting to harvest honey that's not a good thing so that's why i run excluders so this is a good strong hive here and the flow should start kicking in any day there's an alfalfa field two miles from me that I think my bees get on at some point. And uh, when that alfalfa field does good, my bees do good. So it's about to bloom. I would say this week I'll start seeing some purple out there as I drive by it on my way to work. On the days I drive by it when <laughs> it's light out. All right, this one is good to go. So these entrance feeders, uh, if you've got one hive or two, they're okay, but man, you really got to watch them. Uh, bees from other hives will get in there and they'll start robbing this out and they'll work their way up in the hive and start robbing the hive out. And if you're using them on a nuke or a split you're just starting, that'll happen and, and your new bees that uh, you paid a lot of money for, they will abscond on you. So if you're starting out, and you get feeders like this, uh, reduce the entrance down, put something right up next to it. So if a bee from another hive comes in, they gotta go in that's far away and then work their way in. That way the home bees can defend a smaller area like that. So I went with it uh, in this instance because I thought, well, I'm gonna feed them all. So that'll cut down on some of the robbing. And uh, it was kind of an emergency deal, so. I didn't have a whole lot of choice in the matter. I didn't have enough top feeders to do all of that thing. Uh, I could have done frame feeders, but when I'd started out, I was, I was worried about getting this fake nectar up into my honey super. And when I discovered that the bees were basically consuming it, uh, like living uh, hand to mouth basically, they weren't storing any of it in, in most of the hives. So there's no danger of this getting up into that super. So my plan is to just keep feeding, uh, watch the bees when they really start working hard, keep an eye on these supers. As soon as I see a super that starts getting traces of anything in it, I'm gonna shut this down. So <clears throat> my bees to me are more important than worrying about a little bit of sugar in my honey uh, that's just the way it goes if any does get in there i suspect it'll be such a small amount that you i mean no one you wouldn't even know it it'll be i mean it, less than one percent that's assuming i get any honey this year <laughs> this is going to be a rebuilding year for me for sure so when those six queens show up from Wildflower Meadows, I'm going to have to decide, you know, what hives I'm going to break down and pull splits off of. And that's going to impact honey production, which honey production this year is going to be not much anyway. So taking care of the bees. There's a cool little caterpillar. There we go. Yeah. So notice how on all these, I'll have some blocks next to it. So any robbing bee can't go in right next to the feeder, make a U-turn and start feeding. Same thing here. And these little plastic ones like this, sometimes they don't fit quite right and they'll lean a little bit. So get you a little twig and place over the front where it, it touches the top and that'll straighten it up. That's what I've done on this one. So this little jar exchange process works pretty good. When I bring the bucket down here and fill the jars from my trailer up there, bees are all up in it, getting into it. It's just a pain. So this works really good. And they'll have this down in three, four hours, that'll be gone. So if you have one that they don't take it, uh, you know they don't want it anymore and they will prefer wild nectar to this stuff 
So when you see them slow down, that's another sign to stop feeding them. Another thing when you do this, when you turn your jar over, hold it right over the hole. So if it drips, when it starts dripping, it's dripping inside that feeder. You don't want to drip it out here on the ground. You're going to attract robber bees that way. So try and be clean and keep it contained. Also, I wouldn't recommend putting a lot of Honey Bee Healthy or Pro Health in these because that really attracts robbers. I put just a little bit in there and uh, if I was just feeding one hive, I wouldn't put any in it at all. I would just feed that hive straight, pure sugar water and no feeding stimulant or health, health stimulant. So you really got to watch that stuff. This time of year, boy, it will cause a feeding frenzy. This hive is not really a hive. I'm just storing some frames there. Uh, I really need to get them onto a hive because uh, it's not long till the wax moths will be flying and they will infest that and eat it up. With losing all the hives that I have this year, I've got an abundance of <clears throat> boxes with frames. It's a problem I haven't had. <laughs> always something new another thing on these entrance feeders I just saw something made me think of it is uh, if you have carpenter ants or any kind of ants this attracts ants so just beware of that putting these on a weak hive is dangerous you want to feed a weak hive inside if possible like I did that big hive number 15 there so that's hive 99 formerly known as 13 which it's doing good this year the curse may be gone if we can just get a nectar flow so I've got a robber screen on this one here remember this was our tiny swarm from the very beginning of the year it's got a real nice queen in there and uh, I was feeding it uh, internally and uh, the robber bees were getting after it. So I put this robber screen on here and uh, they can only come and go out this little top entrance. But I did open this uh, little flap down here uh, because it's, the situation is a lot better now. And this is the hive that little swarm came out of. So both of these requeened successfully. It's a miracle. <laughs> My uh, historical requeening percentage rate has gone down the last two three years last year especially i'm not sure what's going on oh that breeze feels good all right got a few more down there and then we'll get into this hive one and look for our queen so these here are all set i've been checking them they're good they got a lot of stores Right here's two boxes that it's not a hive. It's just boxes sitting there. That top one's from Hive 27, the one that had all the dead bees from down there. So I got to do something with that. So uh, here's 20, 24. We'll start on it. Get these fed real quick. Yeah, I can smell that box there. It's a uh, it's got dead bees in there, dead brood. It stinks. Need to take care of that. That hurts my bee suit. <laughs> These two don't have supers, so I'm not going to worry about overfeeding per se. See how I hold this over the feeder while it's dripping? So you don't drip any around. This next hive is the Wildflower Meadows hive from, I think, three years ago now. It was a Wildflower Meadows queen, and they have superseded one time. And uh, they must have mated with a, a really redneck Oklahoma bee because, boy, they are, they're a little grumpy. Maybe it's because they're out of food or low. But they did have a little bit of honey in there, so... This is uh, just in case feeding here. 
because I want to keep this hive good and healthy. I'm assuming they'll chill out once the flow gets going. Because the Wildflower Meadows bees, they are super chill bees. All right, let's get in uh, Hive 1. Okay, here's our Hive 1 split from Hive 20. We've got the robbing screen on there. I don't have the bottom part of it open. Right there, I got that shut right now. What I found is after I've been in here and I work on them, uh, it attracts some robber bees. So I've just been leaving it on with the little top part right there open. So I'm hoping that Queen's figured this out. She's got out and made it and came back. But last time I was in here, there was no sign of her. I had been feeding them a pint instead of a quart. And they were not building up any stores so last feeding i gave them a quart and the quart is gone empty so maybe they've got some stored up now there's the two sticks so i had that jar sitting right on top of those sticks facing with the lid down and i have boosted this one time with an additional frame of bees from hive 20. So I suspect some of them returned after I did the split. Completely blank and empty frame. Hopefully I'll see a little bit stored out here on this frame now. I do not, that's uh, some pollen from the split. They may be bringing in a little bit of pollen too. Nothing stored on that side. And again, this is pollen from the original split. Looking to see if I see a queen. So this queen, she's she's not a big one. So she would have been a either a super seizure or an emergency queen. And I'm still not seeing any stores. Man, so they've consumed that whole court and have put nothing away. Unless it's on this next frame or in here. So these, see how these bees are all huddled up together? It's because probably there's no food in here. It's amazing to me that they're consuming all of that. Plus they don't have a lot of foragers. And I don't see that queen. Even though she's tiny on a frame like this, she's fairly easy to spot. I've got a feeling she went out and didn't come back. We do need to go over to that Hive 20 and check it at some point as well. Still no food, a little ball there. Oh, that's, they're on that, it's just like a old queen cup. It's empty. Man, I do not see our queen. I didn't look on this side. Nope. So that's basically what I was pulling out of there on the other side. Just an old cup. So yeah, I will give them that other quart. These are some hungry bees. So I've given them two or three pints, one quart. And there is no stores whatsoever in there. So they're consuming it or it's getting robbed. And I don't think it's getting robbed with that robbing, robbing screen on there, it's pretty effective. And on my top notch, I've got it blocked off so no bees can come in through there and get to it. Yeah, so that's how it's going this year at the Jerome Bee Farm. One step forward, five steps back. <laughs> so man, it's a tough year. Gosh, lost a third of my hives and then now this drought starvation thing. But uh, we did have two good uh, mated queens there and that's a good thing. If uh, this doesn't work out here, which it looks like it doesn't uh, in two weeks, I'll have my wildflower meadows queens and I'll use this as one of those for 
one of those queens and uh, I will need to get a probably uh, in a week or so put a frame of capped brood in here so none of these workers start doing the laying worker thing and uh, that would ruin this comb and we don't want that so and it's hard to get stopped once it starts so after so many days with no queen no brood pheromones a worker bee some of them will start laying eggs and uh, it's hard to get that stopped laying workers is what that's called so we don't want that so i'll uh, end it here uh, put any comments down below appreciate you all sticking around and watching the bee videos and uh, i'll be making more so give me a thumbs up and we'll catch you on the next one y'all take care